that I always tell people is that I love technology, I've read all the manuals, and I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy to use for everyone. But, and I'm gonna get, throw a joke out here, because me and Nate, who's standing in the back of the room, we're thinking about an unofficial theme for celebration. So the theme that we thought of, or that I thought of, was like, out here in these streets, meaning that if you're a real estate agent, you definitely have to get your hustle on in order to be at the top of your game and to get more exposure for your real estate business. So you can either hustle your life and die and be out here in these streets. And when I say these, I mean D-E-Z, not T-H-E-S-E, -E, right? These streets. So you can hustle or you can start marketing yourself in ways where you can start getting free media attention for your real estate business, your brokerage or whatever. And we all hustle on social media, but the audience that you will reach from podcasts, from news stations, uh, from newspaper, and from radio pales in comparison to what you can ever build on social media. Because you're talking about audiences in some media platforms that are hundreds of thousands of people that you are reaching out to on a fairly consistent basis, and you can do it absolutely for free, which is the amazing thing, because all of the networks that I have listed behind me are constantly looking for experts for their shows. And I am here to tell you, when I say experts, I don't necessarily mean real estate experts. Whatever you're passionate about that's gonna get you on the screen, you definitely can pitch that and be a guest on whatever media that you want and you can get free exposure. For example, I'm from Kansas City. Go Chiefs, right? Yeah. All right, yeah, hopefully they win the Super Bowl. Uh, real estate, uh, uh oh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so hopefully one of the, uh, well, I'll tell a story about Letty Ann and I'll tell another story about how I got some awesome media attention. So I know a broker agent in Kansas City named Letty Ann and she has a company called Letty Ann and Associates. So I kept talking to Letty Ann, because no one listens to me, uh, even as a tech guy, no one does. And I said, Letty Ann, you can get on TV. You have a book, a cookbook about different recipes. So sure enough, Letty Ann reaches out to our uh, CBS affiliate, and they have her on, Cook and Chili. Now they mentioned that she's a real estate agent and a broker, but she went on and cooked some Cincinnati chili. How many of you have had Cincinnati chili? Someone said, oh God, and yes. <laughs> It is an old God moment. But I mean, it got her free exposure. But then I'll t I'll, later on, I'll tell you what, what she didn't do, which definitely helped you out. So my story, as far as my claim to fame with media, and this is part about out here in these streets, is that in 2012, my IT business was starting to, I won't say falter, but business take, tapered out. I mean, I might need something that's gonna give a jump and make people find out about me as an IT expert in my company, as far as computer repair services. So I started this, well actually there was a national movement called the Cash Mob that was going on around 2011, 2012. Now to explain to you what a Cash Mob is, it's, a, it's a, basically a crowdfunding funding event where you as an entrepreneur go and say, hey, I'm gonna help XYZ business get more people into their business. So you get with the business, you set a date when you're gonna have the mob, you tell the people, usually on social media, and then people show up in droves uh, paying only cash, that's why they call it the cash mob, so that the, the small mom and pop businesses would not have to worry about this influx of paying like Square and Clover and all the credit card processing fees. And it was, I, when I started it, I was like, man, I'm just gonna do this just to be like seen as a you know, helpful person in the community. That's not to say that I'm not, but I mean the goal obviously at the end was to get a little bit more exposure for my business. And after I put the word out on social media, I'm like, man, wouldn't it be great to get some newspaper coverage just for them to write an article? And so I reached out to our local paper, which is the Kansas City Star. Within hours, I had the business editor uh, messaging me saying, hey, we'd like to interview you. Not we're gonna put it in the, in the social calendar or the community calendar of events that are going on. We wanna interview you and uh, have a story out of it. So she interviewed me over the, um, over the phone. Next day I got a call saying, hey, we need to send a photographer out to take a picture of you 
so that we can have it run alongside this article, right? Paper comes out two days later, front page of the Kansas City Star. Front page. It gets better. So <laughs> a lot of media outlets, in, at least in the Kansas City area, rely on the Kansas City Star to get their trending stories. So six o'clock, well actually the, day, the night before, our local ABC affiliate called and said, hey, we want you to talk to Brenda Washington, who's a reporter. And I'm freaking out, like, what are you calling me for? Well, yeah, we want to come out and cover your cash mob. I want to interview you to get the story. So one of the lessons I learned is the news doesn't really care about you because I set an interview up with Brenda Washington. And I, I kid you not, I, my story got pushed back because there's a cheese truck, the day of his cash mob, <laughs> that tipped over. So there's Kraft, you know, Velveeta all over the, inter or over the interstate. And obviously that got more coverage than my cash mob. So you can't get mad at media if they put you off because you know if a new trending story comes in, they're gonna go with that. But what was amazing, they pushed me back. The cheese truck wasn't a big issue. So I got interviewed by another reporter and that, that interview went great. And this is the same day at the cash mob. So we, we start our, our event in the evening. It was like from five to seven. It's freezing outside, I chose uh, customers that I work with in my IT business because having a cash mob was such an outrageous idea that I'm like, if I approach some unknown business, they're like, you're nuts. We're not going to do anything like that. But I had customers, and it was kind of during the time where, uh, well, I won't say recession, but mom and pop businesses were struggling. So they're like, yeah, we'll take any opportunity to get people into our shops. Five o'clock rolls around. Every news station in the Kansas City metro area came out to cover the cash mob. All of them, and there's a, there's in our area there's at least four networks, and they didn't. It wasn't like, oh, Bert, we want to interview. It's like, hey, we saw the thing on the star. We want to come out and we want to cover you and your event. And I mean, that's what started my media journey because after that, I couldn't go anywhere in the metro area without people recognizing me, not only for myself but also for my company too. And so we kept cash mobs up for about a two year period. And um, it worked well, but I just got too busy and wasn't able to maintain it. Now, as far as the real brand for my computer repair company, because of the cash mob, one of the local reporters remembered, and I, I would say, go back to and say, not only did we get the local coverage from all of the stations that day of the mob, I also, every month when we hosted a cash mob, they would either mention it with my name or they would have us on the lifestyle shows in the metro area saying, hey, tell us about the next cash mob, who's going to be hosting it, all that good stuff. So it really got me out in media and it was free coverage, which is what I'm sure all of you want. It wasn't, you didn't care about coming to see Burton. You saw the word free in the topic, and you're like, yeah, I want free coverage. <laughs> but that evolved to appearing on a regular basis talking about my IT business on all of the local stations. And I had a reporter reach out and say, hey, I see the valuable content that you share on social media. Would you like to come on air and read some of your tech tips? And I was like, well, heck yeah, I'm not going to turn that down. But in that 10 year period or 11 year period now, I've been on all of the local stations multi on multiple occasions in the Kansas City area. In fact, one time there was like a fan on Burton on TV. <laughs> I was appearing so much. Because they, they would reach out, heck yeah, I want to be on. But then they would tell reporters, yeah, don't, don't, don't interview this guy. You know, he's just on too much. And during the pandemic, <coughs> I had always wanted to go nationally. And I never, um, I never really considered that I could do it, but what happened during the pandemic? A lot of newscasts were Zoom interviews. So I got the bright idea to start reaching out to different national news stations. So don't hate me, I've been on Newsmax. I don't know what you I don't care what your political affiliation is, but I'm gonna tell you tech on Newsmax is just tech. I'm not gonna bring it up and say, hey, uh, yeah, what do you think about blah, 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 and the president, none of that. It was a Twitter hat, I got on Newsmax twice during the pandemic. Uh, that led to me being on News Nation Now, which is based out of Chicago and they're a national station. Um, I've also been on CBS. In fact, I was on CBS, I've been on twice so far, but one of the big things that I got to do on CBS was to talk about um, this, the Apple rollout. 
when Apple rolled their products out in September, they called and said, hey, Bert, you want to be on? I'm like, heck yeah, you know, I'm going to look like the expert. Um, so I was on CBS. I've also been on ATD News, and I've been on TV internationally because I've been on TV in London, too. All, all that to say that you can build your real estate brand and build it to the next level if you get on media. And we need to talk about how you can do that because you want to be that real estate age, agent who's the... I almost said Granny Smith, but the, those are the ones that are surrounding the, those are the ones that are surrounding that. So yeah, you want to be the red apple, even though I prefer Granny Smith apple. You know? <laughs> Who's with me who loves Granny Smith apple? Right, right? Yeah. So anyway, you want to be that red apple in a mix of real estate because you realize that there are so, your markets are so saturated that you want to be that shining star and get that media attention so that people are calling you. And again, when I talk about media, again, podcast, newspaper, radio, all of it. You want to take advantage of it because we all know it influences and power. And if you're in major media, even podcasts, like for example, I've been on Lee Brown's podcast, right? So yeah, that's, that's big. That's huge. She has a huge podcast and you want that type of coverage and to be on those shows. Now to kind of break up our presentation, we're going to play a little game called Myth or Fact. And it's just random crap. And <laughs> just shout out the answer. I want to make this fun. So Myth or Fact, Scrooge McDuck, is the richest fictional character out there. Is that a myth or is that a fact? Myth. Yeah. Fact. I'm just looking, I'm not saying. <laughs> so it is a fact. Scrooge McDuck is the richest fictional character out there at a net worth of, I think, $46 billion. Really? Yeah, like Austin Powers billion, you know, not one million, one billion dollars. Yeah. yeah, Scrooge McDuck, he's the man. So number one, you want to build your personal brand. And media will definitely help you build your personal brand. But you have to do it first before the media outlets call you. Because I think the mistake that many people will, when it comes to media, what they will do is they want to feature their real estate business. And you know what that's called? Commercial. Well, exactly. And someone just said it. It's advertising. And that definitely is not what most of your media outlets want. They want a subject matter expert who is going to be able to help solve the issue that they're having as a guest or whatever problem that they come up with, you need to be able to position yourself to solve problems and it doesn't necessarily have to be real estate. The whole idea is to get whatever you're passionate about, whatever you can help people out with and get yourself on news, radio, whatever. So position your brand and I hate to tell you this because everyone's like, I hate social media, but that is one of the sources that most of your producers for these media shows look for is they go and vet you out on social media. So one of the things that you need to start doing as far as your content that you're posting on social media, whether it be real estate or whatever you're passionate about, you need to start sharing that on your social media channel. For example, as a tech guy, I'm always sharing tech tips to help pe get, uh, people get over the technology hump. Where it's social media, how to fix your phone or your computer, or I think the big topic now is chat GPT. So I'll record video, I'll share content, I'll do blog posts that definitely show that I am the expert in my area. I will tell you as a, a tech guy and, no one, and someone who doesn't know about real estate, I want to know things such as how do I prepare my house to, to sell it? What things I should look for as a buyer when I'm looking for a property or homes in real estate? I want to know, should I redo my basement? Should I uh, have a restager come in and restage my home? And of course, the most famous one, how do I sell my own house without a real estate agent? Which is impossible, right? You can't, you can't, you can't do it. But blog posts are a perfect way to build your brand. And blog posts don't have to be lengthy. And again, they don't have to be real estate. If you're a pet lover and you can share pet care tips, that does not take away from your real estate brand. The fact that you're branding yourself on your social media as realtor, which I hope that you're using the banner on Facebook and on LinkedIn and on Twitter, uh, showing that you are either with a brokerage or a real estate agent or even lengthening your last name on social media so it says realtor at the end, that's the beginning of you starting your brand. But if you love to cook, again, if you love pets, if you love to garden, and you can share information that's gonna help me in my lives, that's what all the media outlets are looking for. They're looking for that person. 
again, it's that mentality of what can you do, or uh, like the old Janet Jackson song, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> and I'm going to do it like the song, Lately. That's what they're looking for. We have a question for Veronica, yes. So it could be anything. It doesn't have to be real estate. Just something of value for them. You got it. Again, I started my TV journey by helping out mom and pop shops. I'm not a marketer guy. I'm just an IT guy. And in the course of interviews and being on, and people looking at what you're doing on social media, yes, it's the thing that you want to attract uh, anybody from a podcast or from news or from anything to do it. You have to, I'm not going to do my Yoda voice, but I almost thought about doing it. You have to unlearn what you have learned as far as media <coughs> exposure is concerned. It's about developing relationships and it's about being a go-giver as far as giving out valuable content that's going to improve the lives of others. It's not about selling and talking about you're the best real estate agent out there because I got bad news for you. No one cares about your business. They really don't. So, I mean, it's great for your, your tribe that sees that you've got the agent of the year. Uh, they see that you're doing good stuff. But ultimately, it's about the problems that you are solving that's going to help get the attraction of media in order to feature you on as a guest. So don't always think about, I need to talk about real estate or whatever. Think about ways that you can help people, but you kind of want to keep it along the lines of real estate. So again, that's why I'm saying stuff like recipes or how to, you know, how to, how to find a home, how to solve those issues that people are dealing with in the real estate world, because they want, people want solutions. And that's what the shows want too. Now I've got that slide up there. I'm like, now why do I have that slide up there? But one of the things, I just remember, wow, that slide's there. One of the things that you can definitely help with is recording live video on social media. And if you need help, I'm gonna do a shout out. Karen Carr is sitting right behind all of you. Raise your hand. If you need help with YouTube videos or social media videos, that's the person you go to. And Karen will also let you know that you don't want to be salesy on any of your social media stuff going live or if you're sharing tips, how are you going to enhance the lives of the other pe or people that you work with? So video is key because again, producers of all of these media sources are going to bet you before they have you on. They're not investing money on you, but they don't want some goofball talking about salesy stuff. In fact, there's a colleague of mine in Kansas City. She had one of her customers on and this lady just would not stop talking about her book. She was there to promote her book. But she was supposed to be sharing tips out of the book that would help enhance the lives of others. And so they pretty much, was, they cut her off. Hate to say that, but yeah, they're like, yeah, that's not why you're here. You're not supposed to be pimping your book out. You need to be sharing valuable content out of your book. And also, if you are happen to be a real estate speaker, that's a good way to get a media exposure as well. Because they'll see you speak, they can see that you're delivering valuable content. So even if you're not a speaker, that's okay, but you need to record some video and you need to concentrate on sharing content that's gonna help people out. Also, if you have a real estate website, that is key because they're always Googling, many producers of these shows are always Googling to find out new people that we can have on those shows. So it's not only social media, but also if you have a real estate website, put it up there so that they can find you and make sure that you have the proper SEO or search engine optimization that's gonna help people find you. So the next thing is to make sure that you're building relationships with the producers of podcasts. You don't want to necessarily focus on the quote unquote talent because believe it or not, the talent doesn't really have any control over what stuff gets done. It's the producers that are in control of every media source. So you can be friends with like a radio caster or you could be friends with like someone on TV or even the uh, host of a podcast. But in most situations, they're not the one putting together the content. So being getting free media exposure is like playing the long game. It's about developing those relationships because you want to build that trust so that they will call you on and have you on as a guest. One of the best ways to find the producers of different shows is Uncle Google. You would want to Google producer uh, and one of the things I was going to start to go back and say, you want to start local. You want to start in your local market. You don't want to reach out now to Good Morning America unless you just have some <laughs> awesome story that happened. 
Like if you started a cash mob and you were the first one to do it in the, na in the nation, that's Good Morning America Today show stuff. But at the same time, there are people that may be doing the same thing that have a better relationship with the producer of those shows. So of course the producer is going to go to the one that they, um, that they ha have that relationship. So go to Google, or Uncle Google as I like to call it, um, and search for producer of whatever you want to get on. And also concentrate on the uh, type of audience that you want to reach. If you're just looking, looking to get local TV coverage, then look, out the, look at those shows, those lifestyle shows that are in your area and find out what type of content that they have on their show before you just start pitching and making, you know, trying to get on TV just for like, hey, I was on TV. You don't want to do that. You've got to investigate. You've got to research that and find out if it's the type of show that you want to be on. Because, I mean, you don't, unless you're in finance, why would you want to be on a financial podcast if they're just talking about finances? Unless you're like a financial genius. genius. But if you're looking for like small business podcasts, those are probably ex excellent for real estate agents and real estate professionals because obviously you're small business owners. So that would be a perfect match for you. If you are like a solo real estate agent and you're talking about the grind and hustle of what it is to run a small business, there are different lifestyle shows and different podcasts and different uh, newspaper articles that you can do. And one of the media sources that I almost forgot to mention, magazine articles are huge. Can you contribute content to a specific uh, magazine to give them content that's gonna work? Funny story, and I, it's, it's really odd. So every now and then Realtor Magazine will reach out to me and say, Bert, hey Burton, can we steal one of your uh, blog articles We'll give you credit, but we just want to retailer it so it'll work directly to real estate agents. Because my, when I do a blog once a week, it's normally just general information, like how to protect yourself from hackers, uh, how to use chat GPT, how you can, oh, what's another good topic? Oh, how to keep your social media account from being hacked. And, you know, other people, like I said, are always looking for sources of information, and you want to be the expert. So you've got to create that content and put it out there. So yeah, I'm featured in Realtor Magazine every, every now and then. They're always looking for content, regardless of the media source. Uh, Twitter, yes, you have a question. Can you comment on chat? Oh my gosh, that's a whole different subject. You're here, sir? Mike, so Mike asked about chat GPT, and I kind of knew it was a mistake to bring it up. <laughs> but I will answer your question. Chat GPT is basically AI, meaning artificial intelligence, where it will you can write code, you can um, you can have it write articles, which I don't know if that violates copyright, but you can ask it stuff and it'll come back with answers depending on how you do your query. You can say, explain to me Newton's uh, law of whatever, and, it'll, and you can say advanced or basic, and it'll bring it back to you. So that's the whole purpose of uh, ChatGPT, and it's no different than any other AI you've been working with. So there you go. Uh, but Twitter is a good source to look for um, producers for different content as well. So if you're looking to get on the show, most media people, regardless of brand and media, are on Twitter. And I don't know why, but they are. And it's easy to connect with them. Again, follow. Develop that relationship. And then pitch as far as what you think your great idea is going to be. Uh, LinkedIn, who I'm sure no one in this room uses it. I hope so. Let's just curious. Show of hands. Oh, my goodness. But I got a challenge. How many of you know about the LinkedIn QR code? I was like, oh yeah, I knew I'd get you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you want to see it, come up afterwards. But LinkedIn is another place to find media. And in fact, LinkedIn is a search engine as opposed to just like your regular social media account out there. So you can definitely pinpoint, I want the, on LinkedIn, I want to find the producer of the Today Show. I want to find the, and another term that you need to look for is I want to find the show Booker. If you're looking to get on TV for whatever, I want to find the uh, producer for whatever podcast. So you can definitely put in those search terms in LinkedIn and it will pull them up and you can connect with them. Now I will say that the rule of thumb on pitching to any media source is that you do not pitch to them through their social media account. A lot of producers of shows will have their uh, content up there just because maybe they're looking for the next opportunity. So the last thing they want is for you to pitch on. Now, if you're wanting to pitch, the best thing to do is to reach out and say, hey, I have a great idea 
Uh, do you mind if you um, give me your email address so that way you can, I can pitch you a segment. So always ask for the email once you develop that relationship on LinkedIn. And when I say develop that relationship on LinkedIn, again, it's not about just making the connection and then you never send anything out. You, okay, you make it through your uh, profile or what you post on LinkedIn or any of the social media accounts to make sure that people see that you are a go-giver and that you're developing uh, great information and yet you want to share it to the general public. If you're selfish and bragging about how you are as a real estate agent, it ain't gonna work for you. You're not gonna get any media coverage at all because, you know, well, you might. If you take out an ad for a newspaper or for a TV, yeah, you can do that. But an ad is not gonna come across as sincere as being an expert at whatever your field is on television. Now, one of the ways that you can start building your repertoire of information that you want to share and be an expert on is a website called Help a Reporter Out, or HARO. HARO, yeah, and it's like helpareporter.com. But yeah, if you go to HARO, you can actually put your email list, or your email in, and HARO will email your request three times a day, saying, hey, we need an expert to talk about. And every subject that is out there in the world, you can definitely sign up for a HARO, or HARO, I think it's HARO, yeah, HARO request, to get an email three times a day saying, hey, we need real estate experts. And it's from different media sources, TV, podcasts. We need a we need a real estate agent podcast guest to be on our show. And Help a Reporter out is out, and there's a couple of other sites, because they're always looking for content. Always, always, always. Everybody's looking for new content. So signing up for Harrow is a great way to start building your go-giver mentality because you're filling in as an expert on these media sources that are looking for rock stars like yourself. I will say this and I will share more. Everybody in this room has the capacity to be on any media source that you want to. All of you are experts. You may think you're not an expert, but you're experts. There is something that you can share with me that's gonna help me out. I'm gonna start pointing out. So Cheryl, what, do you, what information do you think you could share with me that would definitely help me out? Real estate or anything that you're passionate about? Wine. Did you say wine? <laughs> I love it. Do you feel what I'm, do you, do you hear what I'm saying? Why? And there are, I mean, and there are shows obviously catered towards wine. Why wouldn't Cheryl go on there and talk about wine? It's not real estate, but she's putting herself in a position to be an expert in a field and it's going to get her noticed because I'm sure if they interviewed Cheryl for a wine podcast or whatever, they're going to say, so Cheryl, what do you do? And what are you going to say? I'm a real estate agent, but I also like wine. There you go, that's the branding. More sites that you can use are Source Bottle, which is out of Australia. Again, it works like Harrow because it's a media source that's looking for media experts like yourself. So they'll pull out the query in an email a couple of times a day that says, hey, we're looking for experts in XYZ field. And it helps you craft yourself like, oh yeah, I can contribute to this. And then you sit, submit your article or whatever you're gonna do or volunteer to be on a podcast or a TV show and that starts your journey. Now the last one, which I really like, is Quoted. Now Harrow and Source Bottle are free. Now Quoted is free for a limit because Quoted is so, well, I shouldn't say dirty. I mean, they gotta make money. But quote, Quoted will send you out a request, I think three times a day, just like help a reporter out or Harrow. But if you're not paying the 19 bucks a month to be a part of Quoted, then you try to respond to a request, they'll say, sorry, you responded too soon. Our paid people get access to the articles uh, faster than the people that are just paying for free. They make you, make you wait two hours. Now don't let that discourage you because if it's free, it's me. I don't like paying for stuff. Don't pay free. I'm not a shoplifter or anything like that, but I, yeah, if it's free, yeah, I want it. So I'll wait for the quoted. And I actually have wound up on several media outlets or at least been on the radar of several media outlets, such as Fox News. I don't want any booze about that because media is media. Same thing with CBC, CNBC, you know, um, different magazines like um, Business Weekly. Um, I'm trying to think what else. But anyway, every media aspect is there on quote. But again, sometimes the advantage is paying for it. Sometimes you can just wait and no one will pitch uh, an article idea or pitch to volunteer to be in a on a news article or a news or a news or a podcast, 
and you'll get to do it on quote. So I would sign up for all of them. That way you're starting to build your reputation as being an expert in specific fields. And think about this, you're probably thinking, now why would I want to be on Fox Business? Or why would I want to be featured in Newsweek, which definitely shows up and quoted? Again, it's about being that rock star and how awesome is it if you're like, let's just say out of Kansas City, and then you can brag about, oh yeah, Newsweek, or yeah, Newsweek interviewed me for an article. Um, the Wall Street Journal interviewed me for an article. How much does that raise your brand? Because you're not seen as just like the local real estate expert. You're seen as like the national real estate expert in that people are going to call you and want to get access to you because you're contributing articles. It's another myth or fact. I get joy out of you. Did you see the big old smile? <laughs> okay, so let's talk about TV. So TV was first released to the public in 1920. Is that a myth or is that a fact? Fact. People are like, Adam, myth, fact. It's a myth. TV didn't come available until 1935. Like on a regular scale, you know. People that said that that was a myth are obviously thinking there were talking movies in the 20s, right? Like in the 1920s or the 1820s. No, TV is kind of a fair, fairly new medium, you know. And I forget what the rate is as far as television. So find a good article or a good uh, angle to get yourself media coverage. That's key. And how do you find a good article? Ever heard of the term newsjacking? No one has. Oh my gosh, what's newsjacking? Newsjacking is a process of finding something that's popular in the news right now and then using that to get on a different media source. So what's the hot story in real estate right now as far as news coverage? Anybody just shout it. So what would you do with the whole thing about interest rates? I'm just curious. How would you approach that to a media source? I'm sorry, what? Well, that's a good one. You could pitch that. Uh, you can talk about, are they gonna go up? Are they gonna go down, right? Because media is concerned with, about that. So if you were the news jacks and they were talking about, oh yeah, the interest rates are starting to shoot up, then you would start to get your mindset of an article talking about why this is occurring, how long is it gonna last, and what do consumers need to do as far as the interest rates is concerned? Which, I mean, I don't know what they're gonna do, but that's the mindset that you need to get into when it comes to news jacks. One of the things that I newsjack about all the time, and I've done it so much that now the media calls me, is whenever a company gets breached. Everyone in here hopefully knows that T-Mobile got breached um, back in November, right? Someone said no. If you're a T-Mobile customer, you need to be concerned. Yeah, because I think it was 37 million, million users <laughs> had their information stolen. So obviously that is a newsjacking article because we're all scared about cyber threats. Um, I, what's another trending thing as far as interest rates with real estate? What else would you think would be a good topic? Just shout it out. Why it's still a good time to buy, regardless. That's a good one. Why is it still a good time to buy? And you can use it to your advantage. Yeah, exactly. That's a good one too. So that's how you get into that mindset. Again, you're aligning with your brand. It's that you are a real estate professional. And you are approaching media outlets as far as this is what I do, I'm a realtor, and this is why I can talk on this subject. That's how you want to approach it. And you always want to stay on top of the news. The best way to do that, anyone using Google Alerts to keep, a tra keep track of all their stuff, get on Google Alerts. Type in what you need to do is if you've got a Gmail account, which I know everyone does, go to Google, type in, it's Google slash alerts. Sign up for the alerts. They can come in weekly, daily, monthly, but you want to put real estate in that title because any article that comes out about real estate is going to show up in your Google alerts and then you can be like the first one to know about that information and then just jack it and take that information and either write an article about it or approach your local media and say, hey, I can, I'm an expert. I can talk about this. And then also you can share it on uh, your cell. You can share it on your social media as well. Fireworks distracted me, so I, that's why I threw out celebration. But the reason they're up there is because it, it, there's, every day is a national day. Like, I don't know what national day is today. And there's two websites you can go to. Pizza Day. What is it? It's National Pizza Day. Are you serious? Yes. Okay. 
So I don't know if you can necessarily newsjack that, but let's say you owned a pizza joint. You can definitely newsjack and say, hey, it's National Pizza Day, and you can wind up on one of the shows. But on social media, you could share it's National Pizza Day and get some coverage out of it. But as real estate professionals, you want to find the real estate themed um, holidays and use those to newsjack and post to get on media. I know there's a National Real Estate Agent Day. I wouldn't pitch that one at all. <laughs> no one cares, right? But I would pitch if there's National Clean Your House Day, or one I would avoid too would be there's actual naked gardening day. <laughs> but if there was a gardening day, I would definitely go with that one. But anything that's in line with a specific holiday, you can go on and talk about the holiday and how people can use it to their advantage. That's the example, or the best example I can use to show how you can newsjack. Other than articles, you can use specific holidays like um, is there a realtor day or a national home, clean out your home day? day. National real estate day. There's what? National real estate day on May 17th. Oh, you looked that up, huh? Oh, you already knew that. I just knew it. Oh, you knew it, okay. <laughs> but other home things is national clean out your closet day. Um, you can talk about that as far as an expert for how you can uh, clean out your closet, get ready for your next move. If you're selling your home and you're trying to either downsize or you're just moving properties, I don't know if there's a national moving day out there. You can use Jack that and use that as an expert on what things you can do in order to improve your moving situation. But you really have to think outside the box and not be so focused on selling yourself as a realtor. You want to come across as a realtor that is giving out valuable information that's going to help buyers and sellers get more from their real estate transaction process. One of the things that you can news jack on, and it has nothing to do with real estate, but I know it happens to buyers and sellers, if there is an uh, incident where even an average person fell victim to an email fraud, you can definitely go on as a real estate agent and talk about that. Just make sure you don't do that in the Kansas City area because then you're stepping on my toes because that's exactly what the heck I talk about. But it's all good. It's all good. But again, be a go-giver as far as the information and the content that you're sharing on your social media posts because it's going to get the, the attention of producers of different outlets out there because they want experts on their show. So develop your media pitch is a very important because you can't just email these producers with some old raggedy tacky stuff like, hey, I would like to be a guest on your show. <laughs> Crickets. You essentially want to write your segment or the questions and answers that you are going to uh, do on TV, in newspaper, on radio, and pitch it to them. So when you news Jack and find that great idea, don't just say, hey, I think I'd be a great guest on your show. You want to say why you are a great guest for whatever show that you're reaching out to. When I do TV and I pitch, I always put, and you can do this for any media source, I always say a tech expert or interview with tech expert for uh, whatever topic I'm talking. So school is a huge one, like kids and social media and how apps can be addicting. So I'll put that in the title, but then I'll explain who I am, where I've been, and then I'll lay out exactly what I'm going to talk about. That helps the producer of whatever media outlet decide if your content is going to align with their goals as far as what they want to cover on their show. I. And I, I know probably some of you are like looking at me like, hey, who's the contact at CBS? I ain't sharing with you because, and I'm gonna tell you, if you start getting those contacts, never share your producer con contacts because it will bite you in the butt. Because then you'll get the people that are so desperate. So then they'll send like the salesy, I wrote a new book and this is why my book is so wonderful. They'll even name drop you because they think that that's going to get them covered. But if you name drop, it's gonna, and they don't know how to pitch, then it's gonna ruin your relationship that you have built with the producer. Because they're gonna be like, well, who's this knucklehead that you sent to me and think that we would feature them on our show? So don't do it. But you definitely need to craft your pitch to make sure that when you're reaching out to that source, number one, you're showing that you're an expert. Number two, you're creating content so that they don't have to work in what 
the, what you're going to talk about. It's already there. I know a podcast that I've been on twice is Melinda Emerson. She's a small business expert. She's constantly looking for content for a show. Melinda does it, and a lot of people will do this. They will have you, if they're like, oh, well, you kind of seem credible, they'll have you write out, and Melinda's got like 10 questions and answers that you have to create. She won't say, well, I want you to answer these. You have to come up with the questions that you want her to ask, and you also have to provide the answers to those questions too. And I got sick of it, because I was like, Melinda, I've been on whatever, right? Why am I going through this nonsense? And she said, because I do it because I want to vet people to make sure they know what the heck they're talking about before I have them on my show. And if you're looking for an autumn, I, and I'm, I want to make sure you're at the top of your game, but if you're looking for an awesome podcast to be on, other than Lee Brown's podcast, I would highly recommend you going on Belinda Emerson. She's a small business lady. And I mean, it's a good place for you to talk about real estate. Now, you won't be talking again about market or anything like that. But you, you need to come up with the situation that small businesses deal with. Because, I mean, show of hands, do you consider yourself a small business as yeah. real estate? You are all small business owners. So there are problems that you face in your business that you can share that are generalized and that will definitely get your brand out. And with Melinda Emerson's podcast, not only is it featured on like Anchor or whatever, Melinda is simultaneously, it's live. It goes to all of the social media platforms out there. And she does a heck of a, I almost said, but the heck of a job do, uh, promoting you because they'll have like your individual headshot, you're going to be a guest on Melinda Everson, has the group because she normally has three guests on at the time, and it's good exposure for your business to show that you're an expert. So you definitely want to make sure that you are pitching right to your media sources so that they will see that you're an expert and that you're doing their job. And you also have to think what's going to be a great story, especially if it's a magazine uh, post or um, or for blog posts. Maybe you want to be a guest blogger on someone's blog. Sometimes with Harrow, they do look for guest bloggers. So why not, if you do blogs, modify that blog post and then share it on Harrow with whatever media source there is. Everyone's always looking for a great story and what makes a great story is, I know you have a problem, but I'm here to solve it. That almost sounds like vanilla ice, doesn't it? <laughs> Yo, if there's a problem, I'll solve it, whatever, yeah. So ice, ice baby. But yes, spell out why you want to be on this source. Again, that's more about crafting your pitch and making sure they're understanding why you are pitching to them. Spell it out, make sure it's clear. Don't be vague or anything like that. But I will tell you, I'm not saying don't be a cockroach. I'm saying be, don't be a pest when it comes to posting or you know pitching to your media subjects. You wanna to try to pitch like maybe once a month. So I was talking earlier with someone we were talking about rejection. And if you get rejected, it's okay. Keep pitching. There is a, our local, um, our local CBS affiliate in Kansas City, I had to pitch for like two years before I got accepted for, um, to be on. For Melinda Emerson's, it was like a year and a half of pitching and saying, I think I would be a great guest and this is why. Again, the long game, keep doing it. Because sometimes when you post to producers of these media show or outlets, what you're pitching just doesn't align with <coughs> what they're looking for at the time. Sometimes they'll put it on the back burner, call you lately, later, but don't be a pest. Once you get that producer contact and they say, yeah, send me your idea, don't keep sending it. That will get you sent to the spam folder in no time. So once a month is good to pitch stuff out to whatever media source that you want to be on. But don't be a pest. Don't follow up and say, why didn't you pick me? Because when you pitch, either they're going to contact you and say, hey, we want you to be on this podcast. We want to interview you on your radio show. We want your article. But a lot of times, it's crickets or roaches, depending, <laughs> right? But uh, you, you, you got to have the confidence of saying, OK, rejection is just part of the process. Because in reality, and we'll just talk about TV for a hot second. Most TV producers get at least 30 to 60 pitches a day. So sometimes you'll get thrown in the spam folder, folder sometimes it just won't work out. I think, um, let's take Lee Brown for example. I think she may be out maybe six months to a year as far as having guests on her podcast. Same thing with Melinda Emerson. It takes a while, so 
you just have to be steady in your pitches and make sure that it's going to be valuable content that's going to help benefit their audiences. And yes, it's heartbreaking. I mean, yeah, when I wouldn't get accepted for the local um, CBS affiliate, and it's heartbreaking. And then pitching to like Good Morning America to Today Show and not getting crickets? Man, it just makes you want to go in a dark place and just go hide in the corner like a dunce. Like, I guess I'm not good enough. You know, I've been on all of these shows. I've been on all these podcasts. I'm not good enough. So you're going to get your heart broken. You really will. You really get your heart broken. But chin up, keep pitching, and eventually it will happen. Or it may not happen. You would think after 10 years of being on different media sources, I would have been on Good Morning America already, right? I even have the producer contact. <laughs> And she writes back and says, hey, yeah, we already got somebody, but I'll keep you in mind. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. But <laughs> well, that's not going to happen with me because I'm not too much. <laughs> but anyway, there's another tech expert that I know out of Arizona, and she even has pitched to Good Morning America. And nothing, same message, so I don't feel so bad anymore. And the other thing that you have to be concerned with, too, as far as your heart rate, is making sure that you're pitching to the right producer. A lot of times your emails or whatever will go unanswered because you're not pitching to the right person. So when you're on social media looking for these producers for different shows, always look up your content and make sure that you're pitching to the right person. And let's say they call, you get that letter. You get that email that says, hey, we wanna have you on. Hopefully you know what the answer is, right? Yes. <laughs> the only reason you would say no is if you were about to board an intercontinental flight to <laughs> Dubai. Other than that, you better be ready to go live. And you can go live on air with a podcast. It doesn't really matter, because sometimes if you're in your hotel room, like I did for, oh, I forget the gentleman's name on LinkedIn, I did it in my hotel room. It was audio only, I went live. I spoke in Rochester back in November, and on the way to, I wanted to go to Toronto just for the sake of going. On the way to Toronto, there was some uh, radio station out of uh, New Orleans that said, hey, Perkin, we want you to be on our show today. Can you be on? I'm like, well, heck, yeah. <laughs> Funny story. I did that radio interview in the parking lot of Dollar General or the equivalent of Dollar General in Toronto, Canada. <laughs> Didn't know what the reception was going to be, but the interview went off without a hitch. So always be ready to go when you get that call. My office manager, I couldn't believe this happened. I was in Vegas, one of the local affiliates called, it was the NBC affiliate called and said, hey, uh, we want you to go live. She scheduled the interview for like a week later and it was something that was pressing in that area so they needed someone immediately. Did they call? Heck no, they found somebody else. So always be ready to go at a moment's notice whenever that media source calls. Now I'll tell you, TV, radio, they want you that day, like usually within 90 minutes. And if you can't fulfill that obligation, you're done. You're going on to the next person. Now, obviously, with newspaper and with uh, podcast, you normally have a window that you can work with. So if somebody calls and wants you to be on their podcast, then you can definitely have a little leeway where you can schedule it on the calendar where you're ready, ready to go. But when it comes to these media sources, you always want to make sure that before you say yes, that you understand how they want to record you. Sometimes it may be the Zoom interview that you're on live TV. Sometimes it's going to be, uh, sometimes I've done Zoom through radio. There's a radio station out of LA that will call every now and then that I'll do a Zoom. And that helps you understand where you need to be in order to make the process happen so that you can get this interview. Um, so time is of the essence. You can't jack around with any of that at all. Don't jack around with, oh, I don't know. Yes, figure it out later. <laughs> Care if you're out in your car, you know. Zoom has green screen, so yes, you always want to do it. Um, I, I laugh at this. There are a lot of times that they will call as an expert for me to be on whatever, and I'll say, yeah, and I have no clue what they're wanting. <laughs> <laughs> so always say yes, do your research, figure it out hey, later. A lot of time media sources will send you a link to an article that they're referring to that they want you to talk about. So always say yes. Now obviously you don't say yes if you don't know what the heck is going on, but if you have a clue a little bit, always do your research real quick. Sometimes they'll send it to you and always say yes. Finally, you've done the segment. You're, you're, you've done it. 
you're on. You've been on whenever you're going to be on a podcast, TV, whatever. Never say, hey, tune in to me because people don't care. What you want to do is to either screen capture yourself while you're doing live, which I don't know if I'd recommend that, but I've definitely done that because I'm more confident. But share it. Most of the times, if you're on TV or on a podcast, they're going to send you a link to your interview. Share it on social media, share it all over because it definitely will give you longer legs when it comes to your, your segment or your media post. Uh, social media is an excellent way to do it. Share it on every platform that you're on to make sure that people understand that you are a media source because sometimes people won't have time to tune in to you, so avoid that. Always share it later when you've been on the podcast. And I think this is one of the final ones. If you've been on, they're not gonna call you back. You've got to continue to pitch. I've seen people that I was stupid enough to give producer contacts to, they've been on, get upset because they're like, man, I didn't really get any business from being on a media source. But it's the long game. It's about appearing on these different um, shows, whatever, on a regular basis. So you want the Reader's Digest and New Zealand article that you're always pitching out if they want an expert. You want to always appear on TV shows to show that you are the expert. Your goal with all media is to make sure when you walk out the door, people are going to recognize you. I was with my boys outside of St. Joe, Missouri, and they're in the back seat. I'm in the passenger seat. My wife went in to buy snacks at the local Casey's. I don't know if you have them or not. And I'm sitting there, and there's this couple arguing in front of us. And my oldest son said, oldest son said hey, Dad, there's some more people up there that recognize you on TV. And, and I said, whatever, son, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the husband and wife, they're parked right next to us. The husband's driving. I'm, his driver's door is next to my passenger door. He immediately whips around, yanks open my passenger side car, and my wife's vehicle and starts pointing at me and says, you're on the Fox show out of Kansas City. I mean, he was just like frantic. I thought he was going to accost me. I'm like, well, did I say something wrong on the station? But he was so excited because he recognized me as a local celebrity, and him and his wife were arguing about, was I the guy on the show? That's what they were and he had, he, And I think he's like, okay, I'm going to let it go. But then when he got to his door, he's like, no, I'm going to, I know it's a guy, I'm going to prove it. Well, it turned out that this guy lived two hours outside of Kansas City, which is a wide reach for television. I mean, that's huge. So, but that's what you want. You want to keep pitching. You want to keep appearing on these shows and make it a marathon. You want to make it a marathon because you never want to stop getting media attention. Now, one of the things that I will share, at least for the TV aspect, a lot of TV shows are pay to play. So you will have to show up either pay to be on, which I wouldn't recommend doing because that's an ad. What you want to be is the expert and the shows that are in your area that are lifestyle. A lot of them are heavy pay to play, but they have to keep the show going so they have guests that they will have in as filler. Now, sometimes you'll get bumped, but that's okay because they're going to invite you back. So remember, podcasts, you're not going to be as frequent as a guest, although I do have bragging rights. I have been on Lee Brown's podcast three times. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. One time because I talked too much and our segment just went over the head. <laughs> But always keep up with the valuable content when it comes to your social media accounts. Because again, they're looking for content. They're looking for people to uh, have on whatever it is, newspaper, radio, TV, you name it. Always keep your content where you're posting valuable information because that's what these producers are looking for. So I think we're up to our final myth or fact and then I'll answer questions. So myth or fact, this is really, in my mind, this is fact. Myth or fact, cornbread stuffing is better than white bread stuffing. Is that a myth or is that a fact? Wait a minute, what was that? Hold on. Dang straight. Yeah. <laughs> That's fact, you know. It's fact. Yeah, so when we, as we, to wrap things up, um, again, do not work on trying to be show, a showcase of you as a realtor on TV. Always make sure that you are sharing valuable content Hopefully that relates to the real estate industry and that 
makes you a subject matter expert as far as real estate so that way you will become the top realtor in your area and maybe if you get lucky enough you'll go national so I will leave you with this quote and while you're reading it be sure to fill out the surveys to rank how horrible this presentation was <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you got some content out of it so again my name is Burton Kelso what no one read the quote that quick oh, my goodness Okay, say that. Well, whoever, I'll wait till the point. <coughs> but I was trying to sell myself. Did you see that? Yeah, I'm the tech guy. All right, I can go. Can I go? Yes. Okay, so yeah, they, that's what you want the photo. So I'm Bert Kelso. I'm the technology expert. I love technology. I've read all the manuals, and I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy for all of you. So feel free to reach out. I'm not going to give you producer contacts, but I can help you craft a good pitch to media sources so that you'll be more able to get segments. But I will say before you come to me and say, hey, Burton, can you pitch this? Make sure that you have your game on as far as self or sharing valuable content on social media and in your blog post. So that way producers will look at you and say, okay, this person is an expert. So that's me. So do we have any questions? I know I ran my lip too long. There's like three minutes. Anyone have any questions? Or Yes, ma'am. Your name? Right. So, can I take some time with the chat? Yeah, I'll let you pick my friend. <laughs> I'll pay you. I just need help. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Karen, didn't you get that? Who did? Karen did. Yeah. Yeah. About her Facebook. Wait a minute. Why would you say that about Karen? No one wants that she information that out there. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Well, I have a question. So, when you're doing these interviews and they call you up and they say, hey, we've got to interview you in the next 30 minutes, and you do these things, doing a five minute interview and they, they cut it down to a 30 second clip. So, so do you control any of that when you're doing this set? Heck, no. You, no, Heck no. you need to be happy you had your butt on TV. <laughs> Even if it was like a 10 minute clip. Yeah. You can yeah. one thing I was gonna add, make sure if you don't get the producer to send you your clip from whatever Go to the website, and I didn't say this, even though it's on video. Make sure that you capture, and I'm not gonna tell you how, capture your video to make sure that you can put it on your YouTube channel. Because that's the other thing that you really need to build on, and Karen can talk about that on a great scale. They definitely look at different news clips that you've been on. And eventually, once you get more well-known, you'll have to put together a media reel in order to get accepted at the higher level. So, any other questions? All right, I'll be hanging around. I really appreciate that. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much.